Now, if I were in my car, I'd look at that space and go, well, that's too small. And then I'd go find another. But that's not what a French person would do. There's nothing extreme about this manoeuvre in France. This is how you park. You would see this any day of the week on any street in Paris. It's actually for precisely this reason that the Renault 5 was the first production car in the world with deformable bumpers. There's more, too. I've just bought this dishwasher, and as you can see, it doesn't quite fit in the boot of this Peugeot. Now, because I'm British, what I'd do now is go and buy a slightly smaller dishwasher, or I'd borrow a slightly bigger car from a mate, or I'd probably have it delivered. What the French would do is this. Oh, merde. Has my car stopped moving? Yes. Am I close to where I want to be? Yes. Well, then I'm parked. As the customers piled in, a problem developed. The car park was becoming a quagmire. That's a problem. I saw this as a public relations disaster, while Caleb saw it as a business opportunity. You're not charging people to tow them out of the car park? No, you're not. You can't. It's not fair. We're, it's a shop. You're here to provide a service with my very powerful tractor. Hmm. Yeah, now to think of it. Does that mean I can have my ten pound back? You're not paying him, yeah, Caleb. Him £10. Give him the. Give him ten pounds. See, there's, there's a business. Don't idea. get. It isn't a business idea. It's theft. James, that's parking space. I'm going to have it. Now we can put this challenge to bed. I'm good at parallel parking. I lived in London for 18 years. How am I doing? Badly. Well, I am going to park if it kills me. Come on. No. What exactly would you like me to do? God, this is embarrassing. and that's affecting traffic going into Harrogate. Finally, we're getting a lot of calls about severe congestion and delays around Regent Street in central London. Don't know what's uh, going on there, but callers are saying it's a nightmare, so avoid it for the time being. That's it for now. More traffic news in around half an hour. It's not going to fit, is it? So bravely, I gave up. I'm really sorry about that. Sorry. 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 I don't know how to park a boat, I'm not going to lie. Trying to park. Oh, how do I stop it? Having another attempt. Oh, wait a minute, my engine's up. Oh, no, no one. Yeah, I think that went well. Right. Stop moving around! I've parked you! Right, well, I was going to leap from my boat and say, and... Fresh from Miami Vice. A boat. It's pointy, which means it's a fast boat. I, I, oh, I've got my leg caught. At this point, Jeremy emerged from the gloom. And as he's the only qualified boat driver on the team, I was expecting a smoother arrival. Here we go, parking a PBR. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. It's really windy. I'm backing in. Oh, oh no, that's not... Oh, oh, totally oh. uncontrollable. This is better, this angle. Oh. Oh. OK. Could you help and get that rope? You pull me along? Please pull me along. This is no time for cocking about. This is dangerous work we're doing. 
I'm glad you got here, cos I think it looks like rain. <laughs> rain! And in the next village, we decided to stop for some lunch. I see a rather nice little restaurant here. Yes, check this out. Private mooring for use by restaurant customers. Well, we are over. restaurant customers, so we can. We're coming for lunch. At this point, we discovered that Jeremy hadn't learned how to park. There we go. James, I'm going to go for the garage now. He's doing it good. Well done. Brake, man! Brake! <laughs> Sorry! No! No! Sorry! <laughs> we reached the bingo hall. You've arrived. And went off to find a parking space. Right, there's one, look. Where? Next to that focus. Oh, yeah. Are you shuffling the wheel properly? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> These are lovely flashes. No damage whatsoever to any vehicle in this car park. Now, Jeremy, can I ask a question? Can you remember where we parked our car? No, Richard, I can't. <laughs> this is a common problem, and not just for the elderly, which is why you may have noticed on top of our car was a box. In that box is a special feature that I can activate if I press this button on the key fob. There it is. You see, this activates a flare, and we now know to head in that direction. Very quickly, we found the correct car park. But we still couldn't find the car. You're the height of most elderly people. Can you see our car in this car park? No, I can't. And that's why, if I press this button... Mm -hmm. You see? So it's brilliant. The flare guides us to the rough position and the balloon takes us to the precise location of the car. Meanwhile, Richard was in charge of valet parking. Hello, welcome, hello. Um, right, thank you. I'm going to put this somewhere prominent. I love the paint, by the way, sir. Key. Uh, oh, hello, that'll do. It's powdered and you simply add water and you get mashed potato. And I think it's better than the real thing. <laughs> love it. Forgive me for interrupting, I've brought your vegetarian option. This is a sweet one. This is Angel Delight on a digestive biscuit. Hello. Hello, Welcome. how are you? I'm very well, thank you. This is Gentleman's Relish on a water biscuit, and this is Marmite. Right. Well, this is interesting. A brochure about the opening of a new car park <laughs> in Leeds. Q <laughs> oh, <my> <laughs> Park is not only changing the way people park, but also the way they think about parking. Parking... <laughs> parking... <laughs> you don't. It gets better. Parking provides a vital link in the mobility chain. It does. You stop your car, it you go out and go shopping. It is never an what? end in itself. Well, you don't just go out to do some parking. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> Come here, darling. Have a nice day. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I've been invited to the opening of this car park. In and Leeds? I, yeah, I have to say I'm very disappointed in it because when I joined Top Gear, I thought, here we go. French film festival, Kristen, no. I've been invited to the opening of a car park and it says, yes, please, I would like to come to the opening of the car park. I will be arriving, A, by car, B, on foot. <laughs> so anyway, I rang them up and I said, I'd like to come in the car. Will they be parking? <laughs> Now, the restaurant 
is coming up in 30 meters. There it is. All I had to do now was park. What's the matter with that now? It's too wide. You see, if I park there, I just block the whole street. No, God, no, you're joking. No! How do you park a Lamborghini here? Oh. Is that the piazza? I think it is. I'm right on top of it. Via Vittoria. It's correct! Right, parking space. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> thumb, <laughs> arseholes. Parking, 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 parking. It's the easiest thing in the world, reversing a land, but you just get out of the car to do it. Can I go there? Why can't I go there? There's no lines. James May, get ready to lose. Prego. Prego. Have you seen a very long-haired man, an idiot? Here. Aha! A space. And it is the one thing that the driver of a Sensonic Saab 900 fears the most. It's a reverse uphill parallel parking manoeuvre. And this is going to be a bit tricky. Just to increase my chances, I'll lower the roof. I'm just watching James May park a car. I suggest you all do the same. <laughs> it's always entertaining. Now, here is the issue. If this was a normal manual car, I'd be able to reverse, feeding the clutch very gently and very subtly to go backwards into the space. If it was an automatic, I'd put it in reverse, and the torque converter would, of course, make the car creep backwards. In this, when I take my foot off the brake, it will simply roll away. So. In reverse, no clutch, remember. Try and use the handbrake. There we are going backwards. But the instant you lift your foot a bit, the clutch disengages and does that, you see? You can't hold it like you can with a normal clutch. It isn't that sophisticated. Right, now let's try the parking manoeuvre. Of course, nobody is watching this, which makes it a lot easier. Are we struggling? So, no. I'm explaining to everybody the problem is that you can't park. No, the problem, oh, I'll explain it to you later. So, brake. Are we going backwards? I've got it. Feather it a bit. No, it's going to go forwards. No, it's going to go backwards. No, it's going to go backwards. This is quite good. It's going to go backwards. No, it's going to go backwards. No, it's rolling forwards. It's so difficult to do. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> so I'll try and give it a bit more revage. Then it, it does. <laughs> that is exactly the problem with a Sensonic Saab. You cannot get it into a parking space, can you? And then when you let your foot off the brake, because it doesn't have a creep function, it does that. Is that parked? Yeah! It's impossible. This complete lack of rear vision means you need teamwork to do parking. Hello, I can't see if anything, can you hear me? I can't see if anything's coming down the road. I need to pull out to get back in there. I can't see anything. Well, how much further? We're almost there. Well, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Look, I'll never get in there. Is your car broken down? Sorry, I, I can't see you there. Hello? In fact, the Hello? best way of parking a Countach is to get out of it. Someone needed to lock some sense into these supercar people. <laughs> I'm going to stop for a cup of tea. Right, let's have a quick recap on my dream car. The seat is crippling. The controls are murderous. I'm too hot. I'm deaf. I've been poisoned. I can't see. And I can't park. This is what going to hell in a handcart probably feels like. Because until now, I've had a Nobel Peace Prize for parallel parking. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I made a complete hash of it in that. But we have put a camera 
where the mirror is, and I just want you to be sure that you understand, see, just how difficult that was. Steve, or whatever her name is, could actually be sunbathing naked on here, and, you know, I wouldn't have seen that either. You wouldn't have a clue. Well, the thing is, James, I can park a Countach. Can you? And I've got a couple of cones here, and I'm going to prove it. We're going to put one there, OK? And I'm going to put the other one over here. And I will be able to get that car into this space, no problem at all. Right. You don't think so? <laughs> you don't think so? I, this could be a bit of a laugh. So. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm in. And you can see the problem. You certainly can't see out of the back. But the extraordinary thing about a Countach is that... That's a good sound. You can actually drive it while not being in it. <laughs> and we're off. How about that? This was a technique developed at the Lamborghini factory, which I've modified slightly for use here. I'm not wearing sunglasses. That's the difference. I am in! <laughs> Is how you park a Countach. There's never been anything to help old people park. Until now, because this Lexus LS600 can park itself. Now, here's basically how it works. At the back of the car, there are sensors in the bumper that know where its extremes are. There's a tiny little camera here that looks behind, and when Hammond presses a little button on the screen, it will reverse and steer itself into that spot. Yep. It's that easy. I just engage reverse gear. I can see the cameras here. I press some buttons and stuff, and then it parks. So, here it goes. This is going to go well. Well, ha Hammond, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt, but this is the instruction book that I have here, OK, yeah. for the sort of command system. All of that is for the park assist. Do you think you can do it without reading it? Well, you... All right, then go on, then. See if I can. Press the button. Go on, then. Don't go on, then. There. I don't do anything, do I? I? Just take my foot off the brake, yeah? Yeah, you no, take your foot off the, the brake and, you, and then it goes. I'm not doing wheel. anything! I'm not doing anything! I'm not doing anything! It's just the car! I'm not! Oh, bugger! Oh, no! Stop! 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 <laughs> you hit the cool wall! Yeah, well, it's new technology. Has anyone got any reading glasses? <laughs> I can't read this damn book, thanks. I promise I'll pay you back. Right. I've got a green light and I've, I've hit OK. There. And, uh, right. <laughs> if I put my foot on the brake, it slows it down. I'm not... Look, my hands are there. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, 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 no. I think we set the radar wrong. We've got to read the book. A equals B is less than C, brackets A and B are equally far away. How can old people understand this? <laughs> Jeremy. What? James. Yes. Both of you, is the green square important? Yes. Yes. What does that green square mean? It's where mean? you that go. There. Oh, I put that in the cool wall. <laughs> that's, ah! Do the green square. I've moved square. it, I've moved it. It's in the right place now. That's where I want to go. Yeah, so that's where I go. Yeah. Here well, I go. He's, he's going, he's going. He's going. I've got it. I'm not, I'm not touching anything. Please turn, please, God, turn. Turn the, the other way. Just... No, I can't no, turn. Turn it the other way. The car has it's to do it. it. The car has to do it. That's nearly in. That's part. <laughs> that is nearly there. Ladies and gentlemen, give the car that nearly did it a round of applause. Okay, this one, you know Jessops and HMV and Woolworths and Comet, they're all closed down recently. Yeah, Jeremy, this is a car show. Yes, 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 <laughs> bear with me, bear with me, OK. And everyone is asking, why are people shopping in retail, out-of-town, you know, centres, and town centres are just becoming boarded-up shops and women in short skirts vomiting and catching herpes, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's a very good reason for this. It's because when you go to an out-of-town retail centre place, you can park your car. When you go into a town centre, you can't. Right, so what are you suggesting? What's it's easy to fix Britain's town centres, rip up every double yellow line and sack every single traffic warden. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Everybody's 
running around going, town centres are dying, what shall we do? It's easy! But if you allow people to park anywhere in the town centre, it'll become impossible to get in or out. No it's rubbish! Well. It's true! So you think parking restrictions are just out of spite? They, well, what <laughs> else are they for? Mean. <laughs> they go, hey, we did really well, we got a £12 revenue today from our parking restrictions. Meanwhile, every shop shut. Exactly. We need to have a more French attitude to parking. Because the, the, the rule in France is if there is a space that a car will go in, you put your car in it. Even if it's on a mini roundabout. Yes. That is the rule. <laughs> James, why aren't we running the country? Why are we presenting this programme with Noel Coward? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we did find two end-on spaces. However... Where do you put the money? Cards only. Annoyingly, the instructions were Six tiny, tiny very parking, tiny. Because of all the different languages spoken in London, it's all just signs. What is that? Flag minus plus. It's O. No, what? Where... It's O four hundred. No, that's where you put your pin number. I'm sure. Right. Put your card back in. Selection ton oh. avec bouton bleu. Ah no, this is that must. Pagamento. Where's that from? It's, it's... everything. No, you that's... just cancelled it. What was the matter with money? Remove card. We haven't paid. We've been thwarted. <laughs> At the next place we found, you didn't need credit cards. However... I phone. Customers are required to set up an account. You will need a valid credit or debit card. For new phone parts and transactions are subject to a max. You are responsible for entering the correct vehicle and location in normal parking regulation of our network delivery. Safe check for signs and find an alternative space where necessary. <laughs> How long have we been now? All my life. Could you give me a hand? Certainly. Okie doke. Hello. There he is. Hello. I'm in the car. Yeah. Uh, uh, You're all right. Uh, yeah. Gonna get out now. The amazing thing is, it's not just Audi TTs. Almost any car has that much space if you want to do a spot of people smuggling. Yeah, it's not that much space, just to be clear. <laughs> Can I get out now? No, because oh. I've just thought of something. <laughs> no, seriously, James, can you pop the bumper back on? What? No, oh, with your feet. No, because... Oh, I'm really gonna... nice. Is it not? Right, so, pop that back on there. Now, what we've got here, I think, is a really rather effective Parking sensor. What? I don't like I this. I like it. I like it. You get back in, we'll bring a car in so that... Yes, yeah, so that you've got something to reverse up to. I need to drill some holes for your eyes. You bloody don't. <laughs> well, seriously, Hammond, you won't be able to see anything. What? Unless I do. Where are your eyes? About here? High in the front of my head. Right, close them, Hammond. This... Hammond. I'm not talking to you. Right, I'll do one for your other eye. There. Can you see out now? <laughs> yes, there, look, can we see? We can see his little eyes, that's lovely. If someone holds this. Right, James, if you'd like to start reversing, keeping your ears open for Hammond's pitiable screams. Roger. No, it, uh, no, no, just stop! No, stop! How far away is that? About 15 feet. <laughs> what? Hammond? What? We live in London. You could build a £4 million house in that gap. <laughs> I need to know when you're about half an inch away. You're not right? the one in the bloody bumper. <laughs> right, come on then, James. Right, here Just... we go. right, Hammond, you're on silence till it's dangerous. <laughs> That is absolutely brilliant. Oh. That's like a quarter of an inch. Right. Oh. The thing is, parking sensors are very expensive. You can rent a man for almost nothing. Yeah, look, I, I don't know how much you pay to rent a man normally, but I cost more. <laughs> now, get me out of here, please. Well, no, because we've got a link into the next film. What? Do I... 
<laughs> and we can't get you out anyway because you're too close. We'll never get the bumper off. You're too good at your job, Hammond. Oh, God. That's However, because the VW is smaller than the Ford and the Dacia, I didn't have to park miles and miles from the hotel. Is that legal? No. Does it, where does it say no parking? No, but it doesn't say no parking in a lot of places where it's obviously not quite To be right fair, it doesn't park. say no murdering either. No. Look. Now, anyone parked in London recently? No. You've seen the problem, no more parking meters now or pay and display. What you do is you pull up and there's a sign, we've got a picture of one here, OK, where you pay by phone for your parking space. Would anybody like me to try that? <laughs> well, OK, well, I have brought with me all you need. Got a phone and a credit card. These are what you need, OK? And I've got a microphone so you can hear what I'm doing. Just give me the number. 0870 yeah. 428 428 4009. 4009. This puts me through to uh, a laptop in India. <laughs> there we go. I've got a microphone ready. I'll put the speaker on. Right, so it's eight. That's the location number. 8744. Your car's rotting at this point, but here we go. There we are. My credit card, last four... I can't read, I, I need... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can, no one got any glasses. Tell you what, so give it to we'll, me, we'll I'll read, read it number out, out loud. All of it. No, yeah. you won't be doing it. They might need the expiry there. I think I've got the reading there. glasses. Yeah, that was good. Thanks, these are... Mm -hmm. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> They're not reading glasses! <laughs> no, there we go, seven... This is to park your car. You really haven't finished yet. Please press the key on which the first curvature of your number plate resides. Eh? Somebody give me a registration number of one of these cars. That Ferrari, what is it? V12, V, V. Pressing hundreds of thousands of... I promise faithfully, the other day I was in London, I used an entire... Ch Shut up! <laughs> I used an entire charge of battery just to get... And I got halfway through the number and the battery died. I had to go to a shop, buy a car charger, come back, then finally you get through to a man who goes, no, it's all right, the system doesn't work. <laughs> he actually admitted, he said, no, no, it doesn't work, no-one can do it. We've got to do something about Ken Livingstone. <laughs> it's his fault. Obviously. I've had this plan. Bring him down here, all right, and set fire to him. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> that would do it. That would get no, rid of it. Was. <laughs> Problem. Like it. The next morning, when we resumed harvesting, my first offload of earwigs was even trickier than normal. He's parked his truck in the farmyard. There's something wrong with him. Right, you won't be finding that in a hurry. Uh, we're starting with the Institute of Advanced Motorists. You know the ones? Oh, yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones who... <laughs> I know they say that you don't, mustn't cross your hands on the steering wheel. You've got to, That's how you drive. You've got to shuffle it like that. And never drive one-handed. They don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone here in the Institute of Advanced Motorists? <laughs> like you're going to confess it. <laughs> So you do this. <laughs> Did you drive down here today like this? <laughs> You're a passenger. Yeah. Oh, you I'll can knock you. yourself out then. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Institute of Advanced Motorists has uh, launched a new thing called Drive and Survive. Well, what, rather than drive and die? <laughs> yeah, that would, that would never work. Drive and survive, OK? And the idea is, OK, what they've got is um, every uh, week they're offering motoring tips, yes? Yeah? So this week it's parking. I'll give you a couple of examples they've come up with, all right? Park on the left-hand side of the road, if possible, and always at night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what happens if you arrive at lunchtime? I parked here this up. morning. You didn't. I did, you idiot. <laughs> Park always at night. No, no, there's another one, right? This is one I really can't get. When parking, open your window in car parks and turn off your stereo. You can often hear something before you can see it. <laughs> well, a, what? a lamppost. Well, lampposts actually make a very soft cooing sound. Do they? <laughs> the window man you can hear. I once heard like a squelching sound <laughs> and then a pop, but that was the neighbour's cat. <laughs> Dear top so-called gear, why didn't you use an Isetta bubble car instead? And do you know what? It's a good point. Why didn't you? Because if you think about it, I've got one here. One wheel at the back, two at the front. It's a more stable three-wheeler configuration. Yeah, but this has another problem. What problem? Well, why don't you fire it up, mate? The 300cc engine bursting into life. Now, if you could drive into our imaginary garage over here, that would be lovely. Oh, look, he hasn't fallen over. Still hasn't fallen over. Yeah. It's much better already. Just Still wait a minute, Hammond. Here we go. OK, all the way into the garage, please, mate. All the way in. You've got a foot to go. Six inches. Well, there, you there you go. Marvellous. What's wrong with that? It hasn't fallen over. It's much better. OK, <laughs> now, if you'd like to get out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I see that, your point. The door's at the front. You'll have what, to back what? it up, mate. Yeah, go on, reverse. OK, where is reverse? Hasn't got one. <laughs> Well, so, how does he get out? Well, this is the thing. Honestly, <laughs> if you think about it... No, if you, no, listen, James, stop fingering the studio. Well, the, thing is, <laughs> the thing is, OK, that if you had one of these cars, you got home like this, you got stuck in your garage, there were two problems. You couldn't call inside your house for your wife and girlfriend to come and rescue you because it was the 1950s and the mobile telephone hadn't been invented. And, of course, if you had a car like this, you wouldn't have a wife or a girlfriend. <laughs> it's very funny. Can you push me out now, please? What? Could, we, we, what? could you give me a push? Back. Can we push you out? Push you Ooh. out. Uh, can can we... Uh, Sam, what's the question? We could only either push him out or... Not, not do that. Not do can that. Can we push him out? Ah, uh, whew. I think no. I'm coming down in favour of no. Right? No, it's sorry, James. It's, it's a no. Sorry. It's a unanimous sorry, it's no. A no. See you, mate. Yeah. Sorry. No. Uh, well, now, you know parking sensors? When you can have them fitted in the back bumpers of cars, if you're not trying it, it's just like a little radar, so as you reverse up to something, it goes beep, 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 and tells you how close you are so you yeah. don't hit it. Well, there's now a company that's making an aftermarket version. Because when you have them fitted to a car, they're like three, four hundred quid, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, here's an aftermarket version. This costs 15 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Right. What are you going to trust to that? <laughs> you see, it is a worry. 15 quid of the plastic and you're trusting your car. Not only that, but I looked at this a bit more closely and it turns out you don't attach this to your car. You attach this to the thing you're parking next to. <laughs> well, how does that work? Well, I don't know. I presume you sort of pull up, um, park, <laughs> get out, stick this on whatever you're parking next to and then... Oh. Again. No, I think yeah. it's probably, isn't it, for your garage wall at home, so you know how close you are yeah, to it. Yeah, it is, but there's another thing. It's, it's battery-powered, so at some point you are going to come home, the battery will be flat, and you're going through the wall. That's going to happen. <laughs> you know? It's not often I say this, Hammond, but you have been a genius. You have never said that. Because if we can't drive this, what chance do the valet parkers at the Hotel de Paris have? None. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. They'll want to move this, but they won't be able to. <laughs> Bonjour, monsieur. Hello, sir. Shut it down. Ah. All yours. <sighs> Bonjour. Uh. Bonjour. So, would the valet staff be successful? There we go. That is how to beat the valet parkers. Buy a car they can't drive. Yeah. So here I am, at the shops, looking for a parking space, as you do. And, well, you can see for yourself, they haven't thought somebody might turn up in one of these. Thankfully, because the ripsaw weighs nearly four tonnes, 
and is a tank. It can get round this issue. Meeting, they'll be having a serious rethink about the width of their parking spaces. Morning, shoppers. And being small, of course, it's very easy to park, but actually, this isn't an issue to the Italians. Here's a bit of parking Naples style. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll start off with a story about parking. Now, Rio Ferdinand, who apparently is a footballist of some kind. All right. Who does he play for? Manchester United. Ah, oh, that's how he's able to afford an Aston Martin vanquish. And he should be able to pay the £40 ticket he got for not parking it within the box which wasn't wide enough for the car. Well, shouldn't the box be wide enough for a car? It would make sense, wouldn't Mad. it, really? Yeah, he's lucky. I got a ticket the other day, and I kid you not, for being parked badly. <laughs> Since when did it become like ice skating? Well, them all standing there. No, I don't think that is well parked. Four and only three from the Nigerian judge. <laughs> and that's kind of negative as well. If they're going to do that, it's got to be carrot and stick. So they need to do something positive. If they think you've parked particularly well, they should commend you. Maybe give you a rosette on your windscreen. Yeah, a book token. Something oh, actually useful. useful. <laughs> yeah. While we're on the subject of parking, I um, you know where we nail this programme together? It's in the middle of London. Okay, there's a multi-story car park next door, two hours, nine pounds in there. So if you're two hours and five minutes, 18 quid. Well, I went into Oxford last weekend, parked on double yellow lines right outside where I wanted to be, OK? Took the children out for lunch, went to see James Bond, got back five hours later, 20 quid parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty reasonable. That's That's well pounds. But you invented valet park, didn't you? I did. Valet parking. Yep. It was... Um, Used to live in Fulham, right next to the car pound in London. So you could drive up to the West End, have a few drinks, leave the car, wobble home best way you could, wake up in the morning, they towed it home for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was pricey, but kind of worth it. <laughs> and straight into a serious problem. The exit to the car park was different to the entrance. And boy, was it tight. This is just impossible. Can't carry their own briefcases. Can't get out of the car park. Useless. Richard, you are so close to that. Oh. Ah, uh, let me out, please. Okay. Merci. I was in trouble. My clutch was billowing smoke and the handbrake wouldn't work. Don't go too close, the handbrake doesn't hold it. But worse was to come. Ooh, oh! We're not going to get out of there, are we? Not only was the car stuck in the doorway, but I was stuck in the car, unable to open the door. It is slightly embarrassing now. Jeremy, meanwhile, was finding it hard to come and help. That's dignified. And James couldn't be bothered. At least we're not making a spectacle because that, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> if you're thinking about buying a supercar, my suggestion is. Yes, just don't go near a built-up area with it. Paris, supercars, glamour. Yeah. Getting his car out of here is academic, frankly, because I don't think the Ford, which is wider than that, is going to fit through, fit through here. This was reassuring news for the people stuck behind us. We have actually dismantled the Zonda to get it off. We've taken this off its front spoiler. This is it. The most exciting piece of driving I have ever done. Everybody's watching, but don't let that put you off. Okay? There's no crowd here at all. <laughs> right, here I go. I think we might be picking up some more bits of Zonda in a minute. And... Ooh! <laughs> 
Oh, it's such an expensive guy. <laughs> oh, I can't bear to I watch. can't watch this. I, I like cars too much. I mean... I'm out! Oh, you. Yes! He's, he's through! <clears throat> Bravo!